I'm going to show you binomial distributions. Now, something that's binomial means there's two choices. It's like true or false, pass or fail, zero or one, whatever. I like this stone two. Get it? It's almost like a one, two. I thought it was sort of binomial-ish. If you look at this right here, the way we write a binomial distribution, there's a, a formal way to write it. So we can actually say that, you know, this discrete random variable, if we say it can be approximated by a binomial, we write it like this. We say n, uh, sorry, b of n and p. This is how we write it, okay? Where n is a number of trials, p is a probability of success. So what we do then, if we write it like this, I mean, this is, now this part right here is not really needed for the syllabus here, but it's still nice to sort of see how it's done. At least in the SL, you don't need this. But we could say, uh, well, the probability of the um, discrete random variable being equal to R, which is the number of successes, uh, it's gonna be, we use this NCR notation right here, right, this combinatorics, uh, P to the R one minus P, which is sometimes known as Q, it's like the opposite, it's the probability of not success. And uh, was it N minus R, I think it is like that. Yeah, I think that's it. So the only part we really need to recognize is just that if something can be approximated as a binomial. So we say it's a binomial where there's n trials and p is a probability of success. This is really the part we need because our calculator is going to do this for us. Now, it's not always obvious that something is binomial. So it's not just like they tell you it's binomial. Sometimes, you know, they'll say uh, this thing is... You know, uh, it passes if it's got a mass of greater than something. So, well, you got to think that's actually pass or fail. So that's actually binomial. You see, anytime you can think about some probabilities, that's the key. So here's a little pro tip that I like to give is that I use binomial, basically, if I'm not sure what to do in a question, uh, when we're repeating something a bunch of times and the question asks for like exactly five successes or, you know, more than R successes or less than R successes, something like that. If it's used like that, that's when I use binomial distributions. Now on the TI Inspire and the TI-84, they call it binome PDF. I can't remember on the Casio, I think it's like BCD and B, something like that. So they use, they use a short form, but it's very similar. But when to use binomial CDF, uh, PDF, sorry. Well, we use binomial PDF. This is the key one right here. I use binomial PDF. P means exactly. So if we're looking for exactly our successes, then we use binomial PDF, where we put in N as the number of trials, remember? That's the number of trials, the number of times we repeat this experiment. P is a probability of success. Right? That's the important thing here, it's a probability of success. And here we're looking for our successes. So that's the number of successes we're looking for. So if we say like, hey, what's the probability of getting exactly five successes? And we repeat this uh, 22 times and the probability of success is 0.2. Then you put in binome PDF and away you go. So remember, this thing tells you a probability. Okay, that's the key thing. So binome PDF tells you a probability. On the TI Inspire, you go Calculate, Menu, Probability, and you put Binomial PDF. On the 84, you go Distributions, which is second VARS, and you just scroll down and find Binom PDF. That's how we use it. Now, we have another one called Binom CDF. So this is the key here. You have to know which one to use when. This is the key here. This one here still tells you a probability. Okay, it still does that. And this one here is still the number of trials. This is still the probability of success. So you might wonder what's the difference between these, right? This here is the number of successes. That's what we're looking for here. Okay. However, the big difference here is this CDF. C stands for cumulative distribution functions. It's cumulative what that means, it tells you up to our successes. This is the key thing right here. This is the, the key distinction. Okay, this is it. So what we mean by this is that if I say like, um, I don't know, let's say uh, I'm looking at the probability of zero successes plus the probability of one success plus the probability of two successes plus the probability of three successes, for example. So then I would stop at, you know, if I said binome CDF of three successes, that would mean give me the probability of zero successes plus the probability of one plus two plus three and stop at three. So really there's, there's, that's the difference between these two. One is if you want exactly the number of successes, I want exactly R. The other one is 
up to and including R. That's it, and again, we get to it by the same way, except we just go binome CDF instead of binome PDF. Uh, so let's look at an example. Uh, no, never mind. I have uh, something else to show you here. We have something called the mean and the variance. Uh, good news, these are actually on your formula booklet. Uh, the mean, so if we have a normal distribution and we're asked for the mean, well, the mean is actually the expected value. It's just n times p, which is actually kind of handy. And if we want the variance, well, the variance we call it var, like this, variance. Um, and it'll be just uh, n times p times q, but sometimes we rewrite it as 1 minus p like this. These are your two different things on your formula booklet. So in case you needed to know the mean or the variance, here's how we do it. Now I think it's going to be important to um, consider an example. I think that'll be useful. Let me just write this down. I'll say formula booklet because I just want to make sure that we have this uh, so that way you know that this is on your formula booklet. You don't have to memorize these in case you need them. There they are, both of them. Let's do an example. I think this will help to put things into context. So we're going to assume that births of boys and girls are equally likely. So that means right away before doing anything else, that means the probability of a boy equals 0 0.5. That means the probability of getting a girl is 0 0.5. Okay. So what's the probability that in a family of six children, all the children are girls? So we have to think about this now in terms of a binomial. Is this binomial? Well, yeah, they're either girl or not girl. Do you see that? It's either a girl or a boy. So in that case right here, it's, it's binomial. All right, so if all the children are girls, what does that mean? Well, there's six kids. So it's really important to consider what these different values are because both binomial PDF and CDF need to go N, P, and R. So we need to know that. So what's n? n is the number of trials, so the number of times you repeat the experiment. Well, in this case, there's six kids, so n will be six. How about this, probability of success? Probability of success, in this case, success will be to have a girl, so I guess that'll be 0 0.5. Okay, so p will be, so p equals 0 0.5. See that? Probability of a girl is 0 0.5. And n is six. Now r is going to vary. It's going to depend on the question. So let's look at this now. In this case right here, we want to know um, all of the children are girls. If they're all girls, how many girls are there? Do you see that there's exactly six girls? I want to know what's the probability of having exactly six girls? Well, think, is that binomial PDF or CDF? PDF is for exactly R, so that's the one I want. So I'm going to write it down. I'm going to say, ah, good. That means I want to do binomial PDF, and I'm going to put in for N, I'm going to put in 6, for P, I'm going to put in 0.5, for R, I'm going to put in 6. So what are these different values again? This is N, this is P, and this is the number of successes, so R successes. Let's do this on the calculator. We'll see, we'll figure that out in a second here. So uh, let me get out my good old calculator, Boop. and I'll go to uh, menu and I'll go to probability and I'll go to distributions and I'll say I want I can scroll down can you see it's binomial PDF there number of trials 6 I want the number of probability of success 0.5 the X value in this case instead of R they call it X but it's still fine it's 6 so I say go and I get 0 0.0156 so I'll say that so 0.0, 0.0156 0 .0 five, six. This will be my answer. This is my probability. Does that make sense? It's not all that likely. Look, it's only 1.5% likely or 1.6% likely to get all six girls. Well, I mean, hopefully that makes sense. It's not terribly likely to have a, you know, six girls. You have to have no boys at all. All right, what about up to four girls? What does that mean? If we go up to four girls, that means we can have probability of zero girls plus probability of one girl plus probability of two girls plus probability of three girls plus probability of four. This is what I want. Now I could do it with binome PDF. I just do binome PDF with zero girls and find out that answer and add it to the answer for this one for one, add it to the answer for two, add it for three, add it for four. That's a lot of calculations. That's why instead I like to use binome CDF because it does it all for you. Because binome CDF does up to and including some value. So watch, I'm going to binome, whoops, 
C, D, F. That's going to be the difference here, okay? The difference here was PDF for exactly, because I want it exactly, it's this, is up to, that means it's going to be a C, D, F here. That's the key. All right, what am I going to put in there? I'm going to say, well, give me it for 6.5 and 4. Now, what is this again? Remember the first value right here, this is N. This is P, and this is up to our successes. All right, so I want to know what's this. So this. This will tell me the answer all in one go, which I think will be really handy. So I'm going to go up and find it again, menu. By the way, you could have just gone over here, grab this thing right here, and just call it C. So you could actually just go up here. You can grab it if you want. There's a way to sort of cheat. You can go back over here and change it to a C. That's one way to do it. You can just change it to C. I don't know. But uh, let me do it the quote unquote proper way here. So uh, let me just, I'll just clear that. So I'll go to menu, I'll go to probability. You can also get to it by statistics, by the way, under distribution. See, they got probability. Uh, distributions, and I want binome CDF. It asks me then what's the number of trials? Well, I'm going to say there's six trials. Probability of success, 0.5. Lower bound, I want zero. Upper bound, I want four. So I want to go from zero to four. Give me that. Do you see it's 0.89, that'll round up to one, so 0.891. Okay, so that'll be 0 0.8, whoops. Was it 0 0.089? No, 0 0.891. By the way, this is approximately equal to. Approximately equal to 0 0.891. There we go. So this tells us, yeah, it's pretty likely that there's going to be either zero girls or one girl or two girls and so on. So do you see this is this is sort of how we can do this one. So that's 0.891. All right, what about probability of more than two girls? That's a little bit harder. See, this one's a little bit sneaky. That's why I put this one in. So there exists, I mean, there's probability of zero, there's probability of one, there's probability of two. I'm just writing down everything that could happen. Probably of three, that we could have a probability of four, we could have a probability of five girls, we could have a probability of six girls. This is all the different probabilities that could happen. And probability of more than two girls, what does that really mean? Well, more than two girls means this. So either three or more girls. This is what we want. We want to know this. Now you could say that, uh, I mean, your calculator can actually, your TI-80, uh, sorry, TI-Inspire can actually do this directly. TI-84, you have to be a little bit circumspect about it. Let me show you the circumspect way, the, the weirder way to do it. So you can say, well, if I want to know how much it is for more than two girls, I can go from three to six. I can't really find that with normal CDF, you would think, so I have to do binome CDF of this. I'll take this value right here, so up to two, and I'll just do one minus that probability, and that'll give me this. You see what I mean? So I'm going to try to just find what it is for six comma zero point five comma two, where this is the number of trials, this is the probability, and this is r. The reason I'm doing this, that's going to get me this value right here. That's going to get me that value. So if I do this this way, let's see here, that's binome CDF. So I'll go up here, grab me my binome CDF. I'm just being lazy here, and I'm going to say, give me uh, go from 0 to 2 instead. So this right here gives me 0 0.344, let's say. 344. Now what do I really want? Well, what I want is the rest of it. So I'll go 1 minus 0 0.344. That'll give me my answer for this. See, because I figured out this probability here. Well, 1 minus this gives me this. So that was one way to do it. So I can say, ah, give me 1 minus the answer. And I got 0 0.656. This will be approximate, of course. And that right there will be my answer. This will be my, you know, I'm, I'm done. So that was one way to do it. If you use a TI-84 or some of the other ones, that's usually the way to do it. You have to do like one minus you know, this piece here, and that gets you that. However, the TI-Inspire uh, lets you do it all at once. I could have done the whole thing all at once. I could have said, uh, let me show you here. Let me just get out. Let me just show you. I could go to, uh, whoops, probability, go to distributions. And I can say, hey, give me a binome CDF. There are six trials, the probability of success is 0.5, but watch this, I could just say give me it from three 
until six. Do you see that? That gets me from three to six. Do you notice then this should give me the exact same answer? Well, luckily that's how probabilities work. So if your calculator can, you can do it directly. If it can't, then you can do it like this by doing one minus the CDF. That's it. That's how you can do these things with binomial distributions.